So I'm coming off a couple days of a high in the midst of this global pandemic. I was invited by an incredible friend of mine to attend Beacon. Uh, Beacon is an Archangel event hosted by Giovanni Marsico, and uh, his MC this time was Blake Fly. So it was a two-day online conference, which was phenomenal, having the conversations about with entrepreneurs and thought leaders, uh, podcast hosts, different people more in the coaching industry, people that are leading companies, things of that nature, um, thought leaders in their industry, talking about how can we support our community right now. And so I wanted to share a little bit in the midst of this insanity, I guess some of the nuggets that I got from the conversation. So I guess... I'm feeling really overwhelmed most of the days, like so many of you. And the source of a lot of overwhelm for me is homeschooling. You know, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're in the midst of my kids' uh, homeschool room. We've converted our uh, family, sorry, our living room to where they're doing their work out of. And that every single day is really super overwhelming because the reason why I didn't become a teacher is because I don't know how to do this and I didn't want to. But in the midst of this pandemic, everyone that has children are homeschooling their kids to a certain extent. Um, And every day there's a lot of uncertainty, right? It's overwhelming. There's a lot of fear around. And even though I have really solid practices in Uh, in my life to move through fear and anxiety, it's the reality still is that we are all quarantined at home. We have a global pandemic on our hands and people are sick and dying or people are struggling. Financially, people are struggling. We're in the uh, midst of a economical collapse. So there's a lot, right? And I feel so honored that I was able to participate in these two full day events online in this conference because it shows the other side, the silver lining in this all, in our businesses and what's possible globally, right? And yes, it does take maybe an optimistic spin, but this is what I got from it. This podcast is a beautiful a beautiful opportunity that I've had over the last two years of running it, of having these deep conversations about how I believe that movement is the access point to optimizing your entire life. It has been for my life. It has been my meditation through motion. It has been my path to my own greatness, my path to overcoming my own limiting beliefs, my path to supporting people overcome theirs. And, you know, we had on day one, Gio brought in Seth Godin. If you don't know who Seth Godin is, look him up. He is an incredible thought leader uh, and has been in the marketing industry for decades. He worked with Yahoo before Google. He saw that transformation and he predicted a lot of the things that you see in the marketing sphere. He's written books like The Purple Cow that you know people use as their manual in their businesses. He is an incredible thought leader. Anyway, so Seth Godin sat in with us for gosh, an hour at least, talking about how entrepreneurs can pivot, how thought leaders can be leaders in this time, and how to maybe overcome some of our own fears, right? And so Jada Seldner, who, if you don't know who she is, you should also know who she is. She has a powerful podcast like myself, Um, and she's just this beautiful soul. Anyway, I heard her speak at an Archangel event, I think three years ago now, maybe four years ago. Um, anyway, she asked Seth Godin the question, you know, as a content creator, Seth, Seth has his own podcast. Seth has a blog that he's been writing for decades that people read every single week, every single day, whenever he releases it. And she said, as a content creator, as a podcaster, 
how do you decipher where to move at this time, right? Because we as podcasters have this unique opportunity that we create content, create these conversations that you can listen to literally a month from now, a year from now, three years from now, and it's as relevant, right? All the podcasts that I've done before this COVID conversation are that, right? Because the lessons, the learnings are as relevant tomorrow, next year as they were when we did the recording, right? And she said, I don't know how to shift in my podcast. Do I actually address things like COVID or do I make it as evergreen content so that in three years, the conversation is as, rele- is as relevant? And Seth said that basically it is dealer's choice, right? Depending on where you want to be of service and how you want to pivot or not pivot in your business is really up to the content creator, meaning me, meaning her, meaning us, meaning him, right? And so it made me think because as soon as COVID hit, I put on pause on Den- Dene Pierce's series and we started talking about what do people need in these moments? And it made me stop for a second and thought, oh my God, maybe I shouldn't have started this COVID conversation. But after these two couple days, yesterday and the day before, I am reminded that these conversations are as relevant now as they will ever be. And that in the midst of a global pandemic, the same things show up, right? Yes, it is a different kind of anxiety, right? Yes, it's a different kind of overwhelm, but it is part and parcel of a similar thing, right? So when we spoke about a couple of weeks ago with Tracy Sagrati about movement and moving through those hormones of stress in three years when we're out of this global pandemic, and now we have new stresses in our lives, whether it's childcare, whether it's our kids, whether it's work, whether it's our health, whether it's, you know, wanting to have the best body of our lives, there are still these stressors that we need to mitigate and that will affect our immune system and our overall health and well-being that we need to move through, right? When we spoke about tapping and heart math with Michelle Jacobs three weeks ago, you know, same kind of thing. Those tools are as relevant now as they ever will be. In fact, knowing those steps, the steps, the baseline allows to see where the evolution will be whenever you listen to this again, or if you haven't tuned in, in the pandemic to this series of where we are going, right? And so I wanted to just put together this little conversation, I guess, to kind of download things into my head and through my thoughts, but also to touch base with all of you. How are you doing at this point? You know, I feel like the first two weeks of being quarantined, I felt pretty good, pretty strong. And then as the weeks are going on, there's different ebbs and flow. And I just want to say from my perspective that that's okay. Nobody knows the right answer right now. The real, the only ones that know answers are the scientists that are actually testing the virus to figure out what is real and what are we taking from what we already know. And so the three things that I know for certain right now during this time are this, and that are really powerful for me right now, movement, mindfulness, and meaningful connection. Now, meaningful connection, even though we are in the midst of physical distancing, can still be connection through video, through Zoom, through, you know, (coughs) excuse me, the way that Geo put together this conference that creates meaningful connection, that you can still have those amazing conversations, those deep conversations that aren't just surface level face-to-face on Zoom, on a FaceTime, on a phone call, right? That it doesn't always require physical connection. I mean, like in-person connection, right? By default, because I run an in-person fitness studio, I've always had that opportunity and that forces me to do those meaningful connections in person. But what I have found is that when I'm so immersed in 
the podcast, my business, um, my kids, that that meaningful connection has to evolve a little bit. And my fitness has evolved. My movement has evolved. I know that I need to get out in nature more because it's easy to kind of coil in and stay inside. But I've been working out more now than I ever have, right? Oftentimes when I'm training clients five, six, seven hours a day, I'm standing instructing, right? So I'm standing, that's good. But I am now running those 9 a.m. live classes, holding my clients accountable. So I actually have to work out with them, right? Because people, when you're doing it on video, are looking to you to kind of be like, okay, what am I doing now? Right. Um, and so I've been working out every single day, which has been great for me. And what I've noticed in moving my body consistently, the five days a week is that like Tony Robbins, like I always say, change your state. It'll change your life. And so the physicality of moving is changing my state, right? From uh, metabolizing those endorphins in my system and the cortisol and those stress hormones, the movement is actually physiologically changing my state, changing my emotions, helping me dissipate that stress, right? So movement has changed my state and the mindfulness piece. And make sure you tune in on Monday when we talk about this more in depth with Samara. But the mindfulness piece is has been so pivotal for me. I do a lot of meditation as it is. I do journaling, but the mindfulness during the day of being with my kids and noticing how I'm getting reactive to this homeschooling bit, reactive to my kids listening or not listening has been a big piece for me. And so wherever you are right now, when you're listening to this, regardless of where your stressors lie or don't lie, ask yourself, are you getting in some movement? Can you add in a little bit of movement? How is your mindfulness through this time, right? What are you doing to bring yourself back to the present moment of being mindful of like, okay, how am I feeling right now? What is going on right now? How am I reacting right now? right? And then the other piece of, am I creating meaningful connections? And sometimes I know for me that it feels a little effortful at times, like, oh my God, getting on FaceTime with somebody, giving somebody a call. Like, I don't like having conversations on phone calls. That's just not me. That's not my thing. But it is so vitally important right now when we are quarantined, when we are practicing physical distancing, that we can foster connection meaningfully through these conversations, right? And so my hope is that for you guys, these conversations are supporting you where you are. And even if you hear this a year, two years, five years from now, that they will make a difference for you then too, right? Because I believe that these conversations come exactly where we need it and we get what we need from it wherever we are. So one of the final things about meaningful connection that I wanted to offer to you is that I have a small Facebook community where we have these conversations, where we're going to, I'm going to put in time for meaningful connections, meaning that we're going to jump on calls once a week or every two weeks so that if it's not your thing, if you're finding that you're stuck or you're struggling in this area, that I can help hold you accountable and foster that for you because it takes a village, right? And sometimes we can't do it ourselves. And sometimes we have to find those that will help us facilitate that at different points in our road, right? And sometimes it just takes that little bit of of push or of someone showing up for you so you can start showing up for yourself. And so I invite you, whether it's movement, whether it's the mindfulness piece, whether it is the meaningful connection, you can join us Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. for a workout. I show up for you so you can show up for yourself, holding you accountable to doing the thing, right? They're only 45-minute classes. You don't even need weights if you don't have them. So that's one for movement. 
mindfulness. Join into these conversations week after week, right? Join in on Monday as Samara talks about, she's a mindfulness expert and she's the finder of mindfulness matters, right? So she will talk about how can we use mindfulness? What is mindfulness? What can you do starting today that will make a difference in your mindfulness? And the third thing, meaningful connection, jump into the Body Project Insiders community where we will do be doing these Zoom calls so that we can feel connected, that we can, you know, hear stupid stories from me, hear jokes from others, hear where people are also struggling and what people are doing to move through that in a positive way. So if any of this resonates with you and any of this makes you feel like, okay, I'm curious about that. I will post all the links wherever you're watching this, listening to this. I will add all the links um, on my website. Uh, And if that doesn't really, isn't really your jam because you're like, I don't know if I'm comfortable with that just yet, email me, info at katherinetanaka.com. I would love to hear from you. I would love to support you. I thank you for those of you listening. If you know of someone that this conversation can make a difference for, or that can maybe inspire them, tell them about the podcast, right? My listenership has gone up in the last month. uh, So I thank you to those who are actually sharing it already, but share it with people that you know, because these conversations are important to support each other, right? And to raise the consciousness of the globe. So I would love to hear from you. I would love for you to share this so more people can get in on these conversations. And I appreciate you tuning in week after week. Have a beautiful day. Bye for now.